Thank you. Mr. Owens, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, back in December, I made a statement that I've seen this movie before, and that seems like it's not, not changed. I grew up in the Deep South, 1960s, days of KKK, Jim Crow, and segregation. My first exposure to white America wasn't until I was 16 years old. I was one of four black athletes, integrated formerly all white high school, and remember vividly the morning, the morning after Martin Luther King's assassination, walking to our high school courtyard and seeing uh, spray painted on, on the wall in red, ding dong, the king is dead. Let's fast forward to the experience of 2024. If I came to Columbia, Columbia campus, what would be the response if members of my race were harassed by KKK bigots, mocked, called an N-word, spit upon, hit with a stick, ostracized, would these same bigots and racists be allowed to protest at Columbia's campus spewing anti-hate, anti-black uh, hate speech? And instead of wearing their white KKK hoods, would these cowards be granted free speech status as they hit their faces behind black masks and, and full head scarves. At a total cost of $90,000 per year, would black students be forced to attend a class of a tenured Columbia student, uh, professor who are discussing the past events of a massacre of black men and women and children, black girls being raped and black men being lynched, would, and would speak in glowing terms of this event as stunning, awesome, and astonishing? President, I'd like to ask you, would this treatment of black Americans be tolerated for one second? What you've described, Congressman, is completely unacceptable. I, too, grew up in the South in the 1960s and share that experience. So, so yes and or no, would this be tolerated for one second? I beg your pardon. Would this be tolerated, this treatment of black Americans, for one second on Columbia's campus? Absolutely not. And okay. we, we I, I just want to continue this because if this would not be tolerated for blacks, why has it been for months and years? We talk about a professor who goes back 20 years now. This, this guy has been around a long time. So why is it that Jewish Americans can then be treated by these, bigot, these billy, uh, bigots and bullies in this manner? It is not tolerated and it is not acceptable. And over the last six months, we have done everything we can and have worked tirelessly to improve our policies. Okay, okay. Our, let, me, let, me just, let me just say this real quickly. Let me tell you why I think these two standards are prevalent. At Columbia Core, at Columbia's, the core teaching values are DEI and CRT, which are racist and anti Semitic teachings of Marxism. The racist beliefs are that blacks are hopeless, weak, and oppressed race that needs protection and pity of the white race. Anti-Semitic beliefs are that Jewish race are the oppressed, oppressor race and that all minorities need to, be, need to be protection from them and therefore hate it. If you ever wonder why the heinous crimes of October 7th never moved the needle of empathy at Columbia, this is why. I personally think that it takes a true lowlife, repugnant human being to make the statement that the massacre of innocent men and women, men, women and children, the raping of girls, the beheading of children, the burning alive of human beings is, was stunning, awesome, and astonishing. But what truly speaks volumes is the moral compass of Columbia, that this rabid anti-Semite is still on your payroll today. He's got cocky, and for 20 years he's done the same thing. It's just a, a little tip of the iceberg of what's going on there and what's being taught in our classes. There's a statement from um, a, student, uh, a Jewish student. It is impossible to exist as a Jewish student at Columbia without running face first into anti-Semitism every single day. Jew hatred is so deeply embedded into the ca uh, campus culture that has become casual among students, faculty, and neglected by administrators. Do you agree with this statement, President? I have met those students and heard those words in the listening sessions that I have been holding. I believe in leadership by presence and walking around, and I have listened to those students, and it has distressed me hugely. Let, let me, let me I, just, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I hate to, to cut you off. I just have a few seconds here. Uh, let me tell you what my major concern is. There's thousands of Columbia students coming from countries that hate America and the other democracy in that region, Israel. How does this work? International students paying a total of 90000 a year up front, skip classes to demonstrate, bully Americans, burn American flags, stop traffic in our countries as they shout death to America. In some kind of way, they still get a degree. 
I think most of us, unless they're genius, most of us spend 100% of our time trying to, to pass our courses, particularly $90,000 per year. Uh, I'm running out of time, I'll just say this. I'd like to know how many of these folks are actually graduating and what degrees are and how they're getting paid to come to our campus and, and, and bully our kids the way they are right now. And I, with that, I'd like to yield back. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Hayes, you're recognized for five minutes. <clears throat> Thank you. I'd like to start before I get into my questions by saying that I am a woman of deep personal faith. And my faith forces me to respect the faith of others. So the injection of biblical theology into this um, committee hearing is inappropriate. But if we were to talk about that, I would say that my faith is used as a shield to protect others and not a sword to hate or harm others. I guess I call myself a Matthew 25 Christian. But there's a few things that I would like to clarify or have the witnesses clear up before I um, get into my questions. Professor Sh uh, Schizer, my colleague suggested that students are getting away with hitting